I am so excited because I have not done a video like this since I started this channel. I used to do them a lot back in the day. They're all private now though, rest in peace, because uh, younger me did not understand how copyright worked and was just putting in clips willy-nilly, and YouTube definitely claimed those. Definitely, definitely claimed those. But I am older, I am wizened, and I am ready to do this again. Um, before we get started, I just want to do a disclaimer that all of my opinions and thoughts are completely and totally subjective, always. And if I disliked a movie that you loved, you know, I'm glad you loved it. Everyone's opinions are on an equal playing field here. We all just have our own personal biases and life experiences and perspectives that influence the things that we take out of movies and the things that we enjoy. So now that that's been said, let's get into the video. The first thing I watched this year was the 2011 adaptation of Much Ado About Nothing, starring, yes, David Tennant and Catherine Tate. This is one of the campiest Shakespeare productions I have ever seen, and I loved every second. It's always a bit weird to me when adaptations modernize the aesthetics, but not the language, which they do here, but for some reason, the 80s-inspired fashion choices and vibes give the script such a chaotic, offbeat energy that I can't help but genuinely enjoy. David Tennant and Catherine Tate are always an electric pair, and it's so much fun listening to them riff off each other. At the very least, this is an incredibly fun watch and I'm glad I started the year with it. Then I watched The Pale Blue Eye and had such mixed feelings about it. Edgar Allan Poe as a detective solving mysteries is such a fun concept, but the last 25 minutes of this film ruined the entire thing for me. I'm not gonna spoil what happens in case you want to watch it yourself, but I'm personally really tired of women existing to be plot devices for male pain. Mostly this film isn't worth spending a second more thinking about for me, but if you love slow gothic vibes or Edgar Allan Poe, you honestly might enjoy it. Then I watched Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery, which I did a commentary for, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time with it here. A lot of people in that video were saying I should have watched Knives Out first, so I just wanna clear it up. Um, I have seen Knives Out. I actually watched it opening night when it came out. I do think I prefer the first one over this, but that's not to say I didn't enjoy Glass Onion, because I did. I think it was just intending to be a not-so-serious, fun comedy mystery, and I personally think it nailed that, despite the online discourse that has now popped up around it. Personally, I'm incredibly excited for the third film to come out, and I hope he continues to make these fun little murder mysteries for as long as he's inspired to, because I will be here to watch whatever adventures Blanc gets into. Then I watched The Banshees of Inishirin, and after absolutely loved it. This was my type of movie, a kinda sorta dark comedy about a friend breakup that includes a deceptively deep look into dreams and the expectations of success you put on yourself, as well as the role you play in the lives of the people around you. And not so seriously, an anti-ghosting parable. Like, buddy, you could have just said, I'm allowing five hours a day to my work and I'll meet you at the pub afterwards. You didn't need to cut off all contact. Which I know, I know, the allure of being able to excuse potential failure by blaming someone else instead of yourself is such a big part of this movie that they're dissecting, but I went into this not knowing much about it. I spent half the movie with my jaw dropped and I definitely need to rewatch it soon. I then watched Strange World and the best way I can describe this film is that the animation team did all the work. It truly just feels like a project at school where the writers just straight up did not come to class so the animation team had to do the entire thing themselves, which to be fair, the animation is gorgeous. The world building is really neat, it looks beautiful. I do wish the script worked better for me, but there's a lot of exposition at the beginning that just feels clunky to listen to and it kept me from really getting into it. It might be a fun adventure movie for kids though, especially because it does kind of feel like the magic school bus for a new generation, so I do hope the right audience finds it and loves it. Then I watched Pearl, which I loved. I know I haven't watched that many horror films, but I do think this is one of, if not my absolute favorite one ever. I did do a commentary for this, so I won't spend too much time on it. I'm personally very glad I watched it though. I love women-driven narratives narratives, exploring life on the home front, and I love intricate character studies that really get into someone's head. Mia Goth is so talented, and I love the depth she brought to Pearl as a character. 10 out of 10. Then I watched Cleaner, which was the most predictable thriller I have ever seen. And it's a shame because the story concept is so good. Samuel L. Jackson plays a widowed dad working as a crime scene cleaner who realizes that the last crime he cleaned was a little suspicious. And honestly, that idea is so much fun. Kiki Palmer plays his daughter who is piecing together her own mystery, struggling with growing up and holding on to her family. And I am not even kidding when I say I cried during multiple scenes she was in. 
She brought so much heavy-hitting emotion to this story that I can't hate the movie despite the thriller aspect being disappointing. As a family drama, it hits. Then I watched Your Name Engraved herein, and honestly, the tears just kept coming because this film emotionally destroyed me. Netflix was billing this as a romance, but honestly, I think it's less a love story and more an exploration of both internal and external homophobia. There are a few moments of what I would call dubious consent, which I mention only as a warning for those potentially sensitive to scenes like that and not as something I'm holding as a critique. In a feature with time, the director said it's based on his own experiences growing up. There's also an incredibly painful description in that same article of his perspective the moment same-sex marriage was legalized in Taiwan. He said, When I saw people celebrating on the streets, I actually felt a little bit sorrowful because for the people from my generation, who were born in the 70s, for example, it may be too late for them. And I think the movie captures those feelings really well, too. It masterfully balances the joys of young love with the feelings of regret that can plague adulthood. And everything about this film feels so heartbreakingly authentic. The way it's shot makes me want to live in their shared little world forever. It just feels so dreamy and yet so real at the same time and I really loved it. Following an amazing movie with a not-so-great one, I watched Holly Blood. I'm apparently on a quest to watch every vampire movie ever made, and this one was not my fave. If it had gone for fully camp humor instead of the half-trying-to-be-edgy humor that it did go for, I think this would have been an unironic five stars for me, but too much of it didn't land right, at least in my opinion. That being said, I never knew where it was going, so 10 out of 10 for keeping us on our toes. I don't regret watching it though because it made for a fun commentary video, so that will be coming eventually whenever I get around to editing it. Anyways, then I watched Seven Women and a Murder, which is another one I wish was more intentionally campy than it ended up being. It's a murder mystery starring, can you guess? seven women, and also one dead dude. They're snowed in, trapped in the house, and have to guess the killer from one of them, and everyone has a motive. I really enjoyed the process of the women dissecting their roles and slowly unveiling all of the secrets they were hiding from the rest of the group, but I wish the script had a little more depth to it, or rather, I wish the characters had a little more to them, but I still enjoyed the theatrical elements of it. It felt like a stage play, which I enjoyed, and the acting was really good. And honestly, I would never have seen that ending coming in a million years, so points for that. Then I watched Megan, which y'all saw, because I did a commentary for that one too. Not gonna spend too much time on it here, but I enjoyed it. It was a fun little sci-fi horror that wasn't too gory, which I personally appreciated. Everyone remember to say please and thank you to Siri and Alexa and whoever else you've got in your life. Anyways, then I watched Bit. I wish this was better than it was. It seemed so much fun from the description. Trans teen graduates high school, moves to LA, and meets it's a girl gang that just so happens to be vampires. Hello, that concept is incredible. But the script killed me. Honestly, it felt like they had never heard a teen girl talk in their entire life. The dialogue was so frustratingly unrealistic and the characters just didn't feel fleshed out enough in my opinion. A lot of things were also brought up and then just dropped with no follow-up. It just didn't work for me, unfortunately. The vibes and the cinematography were great though, so if you like teen vampire movies, it might be worth it to check out. I really hope it works better for you than it did for me. Then I watched Fancy Dance as part of Sundance Online and really enjoyed it. It's a quiet emotional film about an indigenous woman whose sister is missing, so she's taking care of her niece at the same time as she's dealing with a complete lack of resources, care, and attention for her sister's case. She's conducting her own investigation and trying to find answers as her niece is coming of age, and it is just so painful watching her try to keep her niece's optimism from being replaced by the soul-crushing reality of the situation. There's a really powerful scene where they're celebrating the niece's first period, and I love how the script allows her that moment, allows both of them to be themselves fully and hold on to the things that matter to them, especially when set against the backdrop of the system failing them completely. The performances are incredible, the script oozes empathy, and the ending completely got me. It got me. I was sobbing. <laughs> I was sobbing. And then I watched X. The original film to which Pearl was a prequel was not expecting that storyline at all. Let me just say that. I did film it as a commentary video, which will be coming eventually, so I'm not gonna say too much here, but I will say Mia Goth is so freaking talented. I did prefer Pearl, but I think that's just my personal taste, and I am excited to see Maxine when it comes out. Then, for reasons that make sense if you've watched X, 
I felt like watching The Eyes of Tammy Faye, a movie that has been on my to watch list for a while. I'm sure it influenced my perspective of the film, but I did not know anything about Tammy Faye going into it other than the blurb saying she and her husband were televangelists. I think Jessica Chastain was utterly incredible. She was unrecognizable as herself and truly became Tammy Faye. The fashion and the makeup evolving through the decades was one of my favorite things. I really enjoyed watching them change as the movie went on. I did think it was interesting how there was so much to call her and her husband out for and to make fun of, but the media and the public seemed to make fun of her looks and her voice as if looking the way she did was as terrible an offense as what she actually did. There were real issues to talk about, like how religion is very easily used by some predatory people to advance their own wealth and power by stealing from, stomping on, and silencing others. But God forbid she wear lip liner and use mascara. Overall, I was really moved by this film, great acting, and because I didn't know anything about it going in, it felt really eye-opening too. Anyways, then I watched another Sundance film online and absolutely loved it. Shortcomings is the directorial debut of Mr. Randall Park. Yes to the WandaVision and Marvel fans, Jimmy Woo himself, and I know y'all are gonna laugh at me, but this honestly might be one of my favorite movies of 2023. I know the year just started, but the film impacted me that much. There are not enough words to describe my thoughts on this film, and I don't want to spoil anything because I think y'all should watch it when you can, but this movie had everything I love in a film. It had a strong platonic relationship that was given just as much, if not more, weight than the romantic one. It had some of the most authentic dialogue I've heard on screen in a while. It had amazingly human characters that were written so well they felt practically real. And it is a coming-of-age film that stars adults, not high schoolers. Y'all know I love a good 20-something coming-of-age story. Mostly though, I love how it explores the character's flaws in a completely non-judgmental way that truly feels like it cares about the characters, figuring themselves out and growing. And I love how earnest it all felt. I was also laughing throughout the entire film. I am telling you, I think just about every joke landed. And I am not gonna spoil anything, but there is a perfect Spider-Man joke in this movie. I was cracking up the entire time and then by the end of it, I was crying. The whole thing just felt so human and I loved it so much. I really, really hope Randall Park directs more things. And then I watched Eight Women. Uh, remember five minutes ago when I said I watched Seven Women in a Murder? Well, after watching that, I learned it was a remake of a French film called Eight Women. And for some reason, I was like, yes, I want to watch that too, except it wasn't streaming anywhere. So I went out and bought the DVD. <laughs> and I have three words to describe this film for y'all. Murder, mystery, musical. Don't get too excited though, uh, the musical aspect is, <laughs> I don't want to be mean, but it was lacking. I really hope it's because the lyrics just lost their meaning when they were translated to English, but the songs just did not make sense to my brain. <laughs> I did not understand how they fit in. Ignoring the musical element, this had the very unfortunate task of following the other one. I think it probably would have been more enjoyable had I watched this one first. As it was, it was the exact same mystery, but with another woman. Very sapphic though, so I did love that, but mostly it just fell flat unfortunately. And now I have a DVD, so that's exciting. <laughs> Anyways, that's what I've been watching, at least for January of 2023, so I'm gonna try to bring these monthly wrap-up videos back this year, and hopefully I keep it going, because I feel like it's a lot of fun to look back at what my thoughts were at that point in my life. And also I just want to add more reviews to the channel because they're really fun. But huge thank you to you guys for watching, especially if you stuck around this long. Um, I really appreciate it. I appreciate all of you. I hope we all have an amazing February coming up and I will see you guys for the next one. Thanks for watching. See ya.